Hey everyone, welcome back to the lab. In this video, we're gonna be talking about how to fix system.io.io exception. The configured user limit on the number of iNotify instances has been reached. So I recently ran into a problem with one of my .NET projects, a travel map. It started throwing an exception, the system.io exception, which crashed my app and blocked it from spinning up its web server. Here I'll share how I resolved it, so hopefully it can unblock you as well. App setup and overview. So first a bit of context on the app itself and how it's hosted so you can understand the environment it was running in and get a better idea if this exception and fix is relevant to your app setup or not. Basically, if it matches similar things like this, then it probably is what's causing your thing, but if you're running something else, then probably not. So first, the app itself is an ASP.NET web app written in F Sharp. I'm using the standard host.create default builder. And so if you're running ASP.NET or you're running a web framework that runs on ASP.NET, like in the F Sharp land, this would be Giraffe or Saturn, um, all hook into ASP.NET, then this is probably um, related. If you're not, you're running something else like Ruby, then this probably is not gonna help you. Now on the hosting side, I'm running in a Docker container running on Railway Linux server. Um, this hosting provider, Railway, doesn't really matter if you are running on a Linux or a Unix server, um, then this is probably relevant. If you're running Windows, probably not relevant. And then um, I'm running in Docker, which doesn't necessarily matter, um, but for the fix that I chose, it is, but we'll go into that in a bit later. So for more information on Travel Map and how it's built, you can check out the Travel Map project page here. All right, so now let's talk about this exception. Um, I notify instances reached, kind of what it means, um, give you some context on how you can learn more about it um, before you go into the fix. And so the system IO exception was thrown when my container tried to start up on debugging by looking at the logs and stuff. It appeared that the container failed on configuration during startup. And so this is why it was crashing and why the web server never actually um, spun up because it was broken during startup, not after startup. And so the full exception message is here. It's basically an un unhandled exception system to my OIO exception, configured user limit. Here it was 8192. Yours might be different depending on what your machine setup is. Um, on the number of iNotify instances has been reached or the per process limit on the number of open file descriptors has been reached. And so that's the full message. Um, that was spat out when this exception occurred. Now, according to Stack Overflow, and you can see the, the discussion here, this can often happen when running .NET on Linux or Unix, and is often caused by too many file watchers on a configuration file. This will often be like your app.json, you might be using like 2ML, you might be using YAML, um, but often it's when it's opening a configuration file, it's creating a bunch of file watchers on that thing because if it changes, it thinks the, the app itself needs to reload. And so apparently this is just a common problem with .NET. And this matched up with what I was doing, um, you know, spinning up my thing and my exceptions logs. It was failing during the configuration setup on my app startup. Um, so this is likely what caused my issue. All right, on to fixing the exception. So one of the recommended ways to fix this exception is to set reload on change equals to false in the configuration builder for your file or really for your app. And this will prevent the builder from opening up additional file watchers and thus will not run into this issue. And so I did this and it fixed my problem so it seems to work and so it's probably worth a try for you as well. And so to give you kind of a better understanding, here's my configuration builder after the fix. This is an F sharp, but you should, you know, recognize a lot of these functions from C sharp. This is using just .NET standard um, ASP.NET um, functions. And so here we have our configuration builder. We're setting the base path to the current directory of my app. We're adding the JSON file with the target configuration file that's created here, depending on if it's the development config or the production config. And then what I've changed here is use reload on change equals to false. And then we actually build the configuration and then we return that for the app to use. Um, but this is the, the change here that fixed it. Now I wanna note and really caveat that this fix works by preventing new file watchers on configuration files. And this means that .NET will not reload if this file changes. This is fine for my case because I know that my configuration will never change during the life cycle of my app. This is because I'm using containers. And so if I do make a change to my config, um, then I would just deploy a fully new container. And so during the life cycle of the app within the container, I know that configuration will never change and that's fine for my use case. But for some other cases, this may not work. And so uh, example that I'm thinking of that's pretty obvious is like local hot reloading. So if you are running locally in Visual Studio or something and um, you're expecting this thing to reload on file changes uh, for your config, maybe it's even using the config for cache busting or something for, for running locally, then this probably won't work because 
.NET will not be watching for these changes, and so therefore it will not be able to do the hot reloading on these um, config changes. And so use this with discretion based on you know whatever you're using yours for. Um, but I think for most cases in production, this is probably fine. You probably should not be trying to hot reload um, configs out from under a production instance. But you know if you are, maybe maybe not good for you. Next. So this one blocks me and was pretty simple. So I decided to log this for posterity in the hope that it helps others and saves me time when I inevitably run into this again. I've gone ahead and added this fix into CloudSeed, my F Sharp project boilerplate for web apps so that I can avoid this when spinning up new apps. If you want to get started building web apps with F Sharp, you can spin up a full stack F Sharp web app in 10 minutes using CloudSeed. And here's a guide on how to do that and what's included and everything like that. Now, if you like this post, you might also like build a simple F Sharp web API with Giraffe. You might also be interested in building ASP.NET apps with Tailwind CSS, which is kind of how I style most of my apps these days. And you might also be interested in how I got interested in F Sharp, starting off in like C Sharp land and eventually deciding it wasn't good enough um, and ending up in F Sharp land. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.